tackle figuratively the B double replacement reactions um, and for the procedure we're going to start by preparing calcium acetate and the first part was to hard boil an egg and I have done that already I've got it right here peel the shell off of the egg and keep all of the shell place the shell onto a paper towel or other piece of paper break into the small break uh, and there's an extra word there in my copy right now but there won't be Uh, and I made these earlier today, and they seem harder right now, but... All right, and we're just going to peel this off. So I want all shell and no actual egg part. And, uh, in a few minutes, I'll have a tasty little snack, by the way. And one of the things I can point out to you is that even though I'm wearing my goggles, all of the items we're using and uh, all of the plasticware we're using have all been used with food-safe chemicals. And so this egg is okay to eat. If this were a lab or if any of this plasticware had been used for anything to um, with the chemicals, once it touches chemicals, you can never use food in it again. Um, there we go. Oop. So I'm going to put that egg in. I'm going to put it back in the egg container that I had it in. Save that for a snack. And then I want tiny pieces. So I'm going to crush this up. And as it says in the introduction, the eggshell is 95% calcium carbonate, 5% uh, mostly proteins. Uh, other than that, I'm just going to try and get, it looks like I got a couple pieces in my fingers. I'm just going to roll this up. And just squish it, smush it, I think, whatever term you want to use. And then be careful because the paper towel can't, um, uh, an earlier rendition of this did get holes in it, but I still managed to keep almost all of it. As I was prepping for this, I did find a couple pieces of plastic from previous lab around my workspace. Let's see how we're doing. Not too bad. I still got some pieces over there I didn't really get. And again, uh, like it says in the lab, the more you do of this, the better your experience will be uh, later. Faster maybe too. All right, I think we're going to call that good. You can see there is some membrane-y material there, and that's fine. That's part of the 5%. And... Um, Place approximately 25 milliliters of vinegar into a 250 milliliter uh, beaker. So I've got my 250, well, this one's 300, but approximately 250. And I'm going to pour 25 milliliters in, approximately. And I know this doesn't go to 25. It actually starts at, oh yeah, it does go to 25. So um, let's see. It's a little bit below the 25 line, and I know these lines are only approximate anyway. I'm going to add a little bit more. And these are beakers. We don't use them to hold accurate amounts of stuff. Let me zoom out here. And transfer as much of this as I can. See, I do have a small hole there, so I'm going to try and get all the pieces away from that. And I wonder if I can just sort of pour it in. It's a big piece there, I might even crunch that up a little more. And it actually doesn't matter if you miss a little bit, but the point is you want to have, you want the eggshell to be your excess reactant. You want the vinegar to be your limiting reactant. And therefore the more eggshell and the tinier pieces, tinier pieces make the reaction go faster. And I don't know if you can see that in there, there's starting to be some bubbles, but let me give it a little swirl. And then you get more bubbles. And now, 
Let's see, here's my paper towel, and it looks pretty good. A couple tiny pieces in there. And I got my spoon. So the membrane's filling up there. I'm going to start squishing it. You know what? I think I did this wrong. Um, I don't want to use the back end of my spoon for this one. I want to use the spoon end. And I'm just mashing it, mixing it, mashing it, mixing it. You can still see plenty of bubbles in there. So the reaction is going. And what we're doing is we're taking calcium carbonate, which is the shell, and reacting it with the, the acetic acid in the vinegar. And that's going to make calcium acetate. And when we run out of acetic acid, and the way that you can tell when you run out of acetic acid is you don't smell any more vinegar in there. That's why we want to take the whole 24 hours. We want as much reaction to occur as possible. And this is not a very fast reaction. That's something we don't talk about too much in this course. Uh, it takes usually before you get into at least second semester general chemistry before you talk much about reactions that take a while to occur. This one definitely does. Let's see. Okay, still got lots of bubbles, still mixing it up, and I'm going to do this for five minutes, I think it says. Five minutes, take a picture of your eggshell vinegar mixture within the first few minutes, it should be bubbling. That'd be a great picture. Actually, I wonder if I can do this. Yep. There we go. And I'm going to keep doing it for five minutes, but no need for you to watch. <laughs> or uh, take your time doing it yourself.